not that I am pro boycotts. It's not a nice move, but I don't necessarily see why it's not the right of a community to impose such. If Muslim wishes to benefit from events, why not make the calculated choice to become a Hindu? It's as simple as calculation as that. This tendency is observed in many collective constructs, not like, say, the U.S. threatening countries like India for not going by its playbook on the Russia conflict. Okay, to be honest, I don't see how that's comparable. Um, what's more comparable is, wait, shoot, the rest of the question cut off. Let me find the rest of it. Damn. No, let, let, me, let me just address that. I don't think we need the... Um, okay, so the first part of the question, I, so you're saying... Um, I don't see why it's not the right because you don't own the streets. It, the streets is owned by the public. You own the temple. You could be like these people, you know, you own the temple. You don't own public spaces. This is a secular country. You cannot decide that certain it's against the laws of the country to say this part of the public area, certain people of, with certain religions cannot move into or do uh, sell um, or have, you know, or do uh, sell their whatever they want to sell. Like, you can't do that. You, 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 how do you not see why they don't have that right? How You're too you, far away from your... the mic. We can't hear you. I'm, I say, how How do you not see that why you don't have that right? This is a public area. Your religion doesn't has no authority over public streets. Oh, some it's... saying it's... Huh. Go on. I don't understand this mentality, frankly, at all. I want to live and I have a deep desire for living in a, a very pluralistic society. I think it is amazing. I think there are so many benefits to it in this like, well, why don't they just become a Hindu? Like that just reeks of majoritarianism. I love the protection of minorities. I think it is one of, it is the hallmark of, a, a, um, and one of the, ways where you can best tell the, the quality of a society. Um, I love living in a multicultural society. I find it fascinating. I find it beautiful. And I think this is maybe something that I just inherently experience differently than other people because I have always grown up in a society like this. Like, and I didn't even grow up in a, a city that was the most diverse and I've moved to a city that is more diverse and I love it. There are so many benefits to it. And I think maybe, um, it's it, it's just so difficult for me to understand like most of the world lives in monoracial societies and that experience is so different and i think when i think about it that way like xenophobic attitudes make a lot more sense because to me it is like so incomprehensible because i'm used to being surrounded by people who are extremely different from me and having it be own, like such a wonderful benefit to my life and it, it, it enriches my experience so much that I really cannot understand people who just want like assimilation like this, that want people to be forced into assimilation, not because of they actually having an attraction or a, a felt inclination towards that culture, but because they're forced to, for, to be able to feed their family. Like what? Like <laughs> people have been, had to make that calculation for centuries and I, you know, we do it for our own survival, but I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. It shouldn't be encouraged. Um, I really, I really don't understand it. I really don't understand it fundamentally. All right. So a few comments, Oxymoron saying from the parking area to everything is owned by the temples. Okay. The areas that they own, okay, they have the right to close it off to certain people. I don't know. I mean, unless they have anti-discrimination laws in India like they have in the United States, right? Well, it is part of the uh, Constitution. Is it? Like, no, like for whatever. I don't whatever, know how it applies to the intersection of private property, but it is in their Constitution. Right. So I don't know how that works in India when it comes to private property, but even if they have the right to do that, then we could just claim that it's immoral. Like, I mean, like like you agree like you say it's not nice like so yeah i if if it's if they stop them from the surrounding area of the temple from selling stuff from the surrounding area of the temple that should be that's illegal they don't have the right but if it's in temple properties then they have the right but that's like you agree that's not very nice like why wouldn't you like why wouldn't you want why wouldn't you want people like come like you have muslims who are selling stuff to hindus for their first of all like isn't that like a beautiful recognition of like muslims coming out and like being like hey hindus like you're having you're partying we know this you're partying 
we like can't supporting buy the community. Stuff? We're gonna support, buy our stuff for your for your festival. No, oh, like, like, taking like, money and economic benefit from other Hindus. Like, like this oh brings communities. To, this brings people together. Exactly. This is, like this is like this is fantastic. I've read like, in multiple did... places that Muslims and Christians even participate in this festival to go pay homage to that deity for good luck. Like what? Yeah. Historically, like this this division is so ahistoric, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about some of these boycotts that have been going on on the news this week. And I'm going to talk about how creating this firm division is historic to India's i like history and identity, like. It's, it, yeah, it really drives me crazy. There's so much interchange of religion and who participates in what in exchange than people are even acknowledging. And what's different, oxymoron, is that in this case, like, this wasn't something that was just this way from the outset. They only did this, and the organizers are very clear that they only did this to avoid violence from right-wing gangs. There's a huge difference here. This isn't this community just like, you know what, this is how we're going to conduct ourselves. You know, this is our own, our own property, whatever, whatever. This is our standing policy that we've had. No, they were pressured and forced into this, but the threat of violence, that's a huge problem. That's something seriously wrong with that, what's going on in that area. I mean, not I mean, let alone the, what gives rise to that attitudes, you know, and the people thinking that that's okay and normalized culturally, but also just how worrying that is in terms of the legitimacy of rule of law. Right. Um, Harris, read some stuff that Harris is saying. Harris is saying that's why they hate the word secular and call it secular. Yeah, that's wow, so the clever. Most I know. Oh my God. I haven't heard that one before. It's so dumb. Why? Um, and then Hara Sultan is saying, why don't they become Hindus? Because belief is not a matter of policy. Yeah. Very good point. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.